Hey guys, today's video is another splurge or save. So if you haven't seen these videos from me before, this is where I take new high-end makeup and try to dupe it with things that I already have in my collection. Most of the time I am able to find dupes for the higher-end products, but sometimes there just is no drugstore or a more affordable alternative. And in that case, it might be worth the splurge to go out and purchase the high-end product. And also I wanted to mention quickly because I always get comments on this that um, some of the products that I'm gonna show, some of the dupes are are more affordable or drugstore options, but some of them may be higher end items as well. And the reason that I'm saying that they're a dupe and even mentioning it in this video is just because you might already have that product in your collection. And if you do, then it may make you decide not to buy the new product, therefore saving you money in that way. So let's go ahead and jump in. And the first product I have is a brand new eyeshadow palette and it's the Too Faced Teddy Bear palette. So when this came in, it actually was quite a bit smaller than I was expecting. The pan sizes are teeny tiny like take a look at this It was really hard to get my finger into some of these shimmer shades when I was doing eye looks And I am actually wearing the palette today, and I really think it performs well I do like Too Faced's formula a lot So I knew this palette was probably going to be good as far as the formula But when I saw the color story I knew it was probably gonna be like a lot of things that I had in my collection already, but I just couldn't resist it. I thought it was so cute. It is more of a neutral palette. It does have a couple pops of pink and rosier shades, but for the most part, it's just a basic neutral palette, which is something that I gravitate towards. That's what I wear most often. So I figured I would still get some use out of it, but when I actually got it home and looked at it, I could think immediately of a couple palettes just off the top of my head that I have that look really, really similar. So let's go through those really quickly. The first one being the new Tartlet Juicy Palette. I got this one so recently, but when I looked at these side by side, I just thought, you know what? They have so many of the same rosy tones plus neutrals as well. And I found a lot of shades that line up between these two. The one shade that I really couldn't get spot on was that pink matte in the two Faced palette it's cooler toned in the tart and I feel like the one in the Too Faced palette is a little bit peachier but I think if you have the Tartlet Juicy palette which I honestly just bought not that long ago then you already have most of the colors in the teddy bear palette the next one I wanted to talk about is the Huda Beauty Naughty Nudes palette. And this one, I saw some similar shades when I was looking at them side by side, but I didn't think I would get a ton of dupes out of it. I swatched it anyway, just because I thought they, you know, they might be a little bit similar, but as it turns out, I was able to dupe pretty much most of the palette with this one. Again, that pink matte shade gave me a little bit of trouble. I couldn't get that one exact. And also one of the gold shades didn't match either, but I actually like that the Naughty Nudes has two different golds that are very different from each other because because I feel like the two golds in the Too Faced Teddy Bear palette are very, very close to each other. They're almost indistinguishable, especially once you put them on your eyes. So I actually prefer the Naughty Nudes palette, and if you don't have that one yet, I highly recommend it. It's such a gorgeous palette and I use it all the time. Dupe number three is the Sigma Corderosa palette. So this is one that I thought of right away as soon as I saw the teddy bear and it was another really close match. The matte pink in this one was the closest to the Too Faced I thought, but in the Sigma it's just slightly more pink and the Too Faced again, it has that little bit of peachiness to it. Also, the shimmer shade closest to the right hand side of your screen is a little bit more pink in the Too Faced and more golden in the Sigma palette, but otherwise I felt like these two were really, really close. Now, those three palettes that I showed you are more on the high end, so you're not really saving any money by purchasing those over the Teddy Bear palette, but I wanted to show them in case some of you already have them in your collection. That way you won't really feel like you have to run right out and buy the Teddy Bear. But the next dupe I'm gonna show you, this is the last one, actually is a more affordable option, and that is from Moira Cosmetics. They're an indie brand that I've been talking about pretty recently, and I've really been loving their stuff a lot. So this palette is called the Gleam and Glow, or sorry, Glow and Gleam palette. It's $17, and this one was close to being spot on. Even the pink shade was so super close. I really like the formula of the Moira palette as well. I think it definitely held its own against the Too Faced, both in swatches and just applying that 
that one to the eyes. I actually applied that in my last video where I talked about brands that ghosted me. If you haven't seen that video, I spill a little bit of tea. I don't talk about the brand, like what actual brands they were. I don't name any names, but it's kind of like a fun story time. Get ready with me and you can see that palette in action if you're curious about it, but it's gorgeous. The next product that I wanted to dupe is by a fairly new brand to Sephora called Merit Beauty. And I did unbox some products that they had sent me in PR a um, couple weeks ago now on my Sunday haul. And their vibe is just like super effortless, almost like a Glossier type of vibe where everything is, you can almost like apply everything with your fingers and it's just supposed to look really natural. So they have these cream blushes called the Flush Balm Cream. They're $28 and it's supposed to be kind of like a creamy, dewy blush that's sheer and leaves your cheeks a little bit dewy. It's honestly not my favorite formula because I prefer cheek products that dry down and they don't stay sticky on your cheeks, and this one kind of does. So it immediately made me think of another blush that I've tried recently in stick form as well, and that's the Milani Supercharged Cheek and Lipsticks. These feel almost identical, and I know when I first reviewed these, I talked about, again, not loving that dewy feeling on my cheeks, but I know a lot of you guys really like that. So if you're looking for a really close Merit dupe, I would say check out these Milani sticks. Now I'll show you guys quickly um, just swatches of the two colors that I have. This is really not a color dupe as much as it is a formula dupe, but both brands have multiple colors in the range. So there could definitely be some overlap when it comes to shades. You might be able to get one that's more spot on. The Milani one that I have is called Spice Jolt and the Merit one is in the shade Terracotta. So on the Milani website, it actually says it's supposed to be brown, but I feel like in the swatch, it looks more pink while the Merit one looks more nude. So if you've had your eye on these Merit blushes at Sephora, check out the Milani ones. They're only $8.99 and they feel exactly the same. Next up, I had recently purchased the new Bare Minerals Blonzer. This is supposed to be a bronzer and blush in one. Now I have the lightest shade, which is called Kiss of Pink, and it's beautiful. It is nicely pigmented. It has a little hint of sheen to it, like a satiny finish. The one thing that confuses me about these a little bit is just that they are all very pink for the most part. And usually like with a bronzer, I would think they would be a little bit more of a pinky nude um, because I don't know that I would wear this level of pink all over my face like I would a bronzer. So that was a little bit confusing. I feel like it's a little bit of a marketing gimmick just to get people to buy their newest blush. But anyway, this product is $25, so it's definitely not inexpensive. And I have quite a few drugstore options that I wanted to share that are really, really close. So the first dupe I have is the Physician's Formula Butter Blush in the shade Beachy Peach. This one is $12.95. It has the exact same amount of glowiness. It's a very subtle glow. There's no shimmer or glitter in either one. And the Physician's Formula is such a similar color. It's just slightly lighter. So I think if you build it up a little bit more on the cheeks, you could get them to look exactly the same. The next dupe I have is the L'Oreal Age Perfect Satin Blush in the shade Peony. This one also is so similar. It's $9.99 and it not only has that same satiny finish, but it also is very close in color. The L'Oreal one isn't quite as pigmented. So I did build up the color in the swatch a little bit to get it to be close closer to the Bare Minerals. It is really like almost the same color. It's just a little bit lighter. So I think if you used a light hand with the Bare Minerals or if you built this one up a little bit more, you'd basically get the same color. The next dupe is the Milani Baked Blush in the shade Berry Amore. This is $7.99 and honestly, this one is an almost spot on color dupe. It has that little bit of radiance to it again. Some of the Milani Baked Blushes are glittery, but this one actually is one of the ones that's not glittery. It just has a beautiful satiny finish. It's super gorgeous and I'm actually wearing um, the Milani on this cheek today and the Bare Minerals on this cheek and they look exactly the same. I cannot tell the difference between them at all and I think both blushes just apply beautifully. I mean honestly out of all of the dupes this one is definitely the best one and the one that I would recommend especially because the baked formula just really it's so seamless. It becomes one with your skin. It's beautiful. And the last dupe that I have is the Too Faced Papa Don't Peach Blush. So this is an oldie but a goodie. It's just really expensive. It's 30 bucks, but I just figured if any of you guys already have this one sitting around in your collection, 
it might be time to pull it back out again. I know I did. I've been using it now ever since I was prepping for this video a few days ago and I thought like, oh my gosh, I forgot how much I love this blush. So looking at these two side by side, um, I think there's hardly any difference between the two. They are so close. It has that same glowiness again and that really pretty pinky peach color with maybe just like a hint of nude to it. So if you have that one and you've been considering the Bare Minerals one in, was it Touch of Pink? Oh, Kiss of Pink. Um, if you've been thinking about it and you already have Papadome Peach, then you already pretty much have this color. So the one thing that I do want to mention though is the Bare Minerals one is talc free. So if you're someone who is watching talc and you don't really want um, your products to contain talc, none of the other options are talc free. So the Bare Minerals one definitely has that going for it. And also the L'Oreal blush and the Too Faced blush aren't vegan, they contain carmine. So if also that's something that you've been trying to avoid, I just wanted to mention that one as well. Next up, I have more blushes for you. These are the new Melt Cosmetics blush lights. These are, I have it written down somewhere, $22 each. And I have two shades, Honey Thief and Golden Hour. So these come in two different finishes. Honey Thief is the matte finish and then Golden Hour is a shimmery finish. It's really, really beautiful and somewhat unique, I feel like, in the cream blush world, um, especially when it comes to finding dupes. It was really difficult, actually impossible for me to find anything like this one in my collection because it does have that radiance to it. Um, I don't know of any drugstore cream blushes that are radiant like this, but if you guys know of any, definitely let us know down in the comments. I, I don't have any in my collection at least, so I really focused on trying to dupe the Honey Thief one, both in formula and also in color. Color was a little bit difficult. I did find one, but first I wanna show you the formula dupe because there are other colors of this and also there could be other colors of the dupe that I found as well that maybe you could always find a match or an overlap somewhere as far as color goes but these melt blushes are exactly like the Milani cheek kiss cream blushes they feel identical so when you go to pick it up in the pan they have this really emollient feel as soon as you put them on your cheeks they start to dry down immediately to a powder finish so this is the type of blush that I love they don't stay sticky on your cheeks and they don't move your foundation around underneath or you know cause your makeup to lift up so um, I really love the melt blushes but honestly the Milani ones are pretty much the same thing so as far as the shade honey thief goes I'm going to show it to you next to two options that I have from Milani and honestly I think honey thief is kind of a cross between nude kiss and you're a peach. It does have a little bit of nude in it, but because it's a little bit more peachy, I felt like the Milani nude wasn't quite right. And then the peachy one from Milani is just a little too peachy. So I feel like it's kind of right in between those two. It's also a little bit lighter. I think if you probably sheared out the Milani ones, you could get a similar effect. So I think if you're looking for cream blushes and you don't want to spend 22, I want to say these are $8.99 or so, and they have a fantastic formula. I've talked about them so many times in videos but they're just so good. Um, and then the other dupe that I found for this one is the e.l.f. Putty Blush in the shade Turks and Caicos. These are also extremely affordable. They're five or six dollars. And I wouldn't say that this is a formula dupe as much as it is a color dupe. Now, um, formula-wise, the e.l.f. Putty Blushes feel a little bit drier when you first pick them up and you start to apply them to your cheeks, but I will say that they dry down the same way. They have that powder finish. So in the end, even even though the application process feels a little bit different between the two, I think that you basically get the same end result. And I think color wise, even though these are just slightly off from each other, I think once you blend it out on your cheeks, you really would not be able to tell the difference at all. So then the last dupe that I have for you guys is the KVD Vegan Beauty Foundation. I already boxed mine back up because I've decided I am returning it. It looked horrible on me. I know this got so much hype on TikTok. I fell for the hype. I went to the Sephora website. First I went to Ulta actually, and it was completely sold out in every shade. I went to Sephora and I was able to find like two shades left that were available. And it's just, you know, that whole FOMO thing. I was like, I don't want to be the only one not talking about this foundation on my channel. So I purchased it. I did get a shade that was too light for me. It's 006 and it was definitely way too light, but I wanted to see just what the formula was like. I figured if I loved it, I could always go back and just get a deeper shade. So this was awful. It was so bad. Um, every which way I applied it, whether a brush, 
a sponge that was damp, my fingers. I tried applying a little amount maybe so it wasn't cakey. Nothing worked. It really sat in every pore and line in my face. My chin looked like it was caked with product even though I hardly put anything on. It clung to every single dry patch. It was just awful for me. I know some people love this stuff and they feel like it's their holy grail. It didn't work for me. And just for reference, if you're new to my channel, I am 43 and I have really dry skin. So I've also heard people say that it doesn't work for oily skin either. So not really sure what's going on there, but Anyway, it was kind of hard to find an actual duper, an alternative for this, just because there aren't a lot of balm foundations out there that are in a compact like this. Stila makes one, which I actually tried a couple months back now. And if you remember, if you saw that video, um, it had no color to it. It was supposed to be a tinted moisturizer balm and it didn't show up at all. So that one was a big flop as well. So unfortunately, I don't have any other foundation balms that I can recommend. If you guys know of any, again, let us know down in the comments below, help us out. But I was thinking about why I even would purchase a product like this. And for me, it would be about um, just ease of use, like having a compact foundation, especially in the summertime, it just makes it really quick and easy. Um, um, easier than a liquid, I guess. So I thought about one that I've tried recently that's kind of in the same format, even though it's a powder, and that is the CoverGirl Simply Ageless Instant Wrinkle Blurring Pressed Powder. This stuff is amazing. I did a whole video on this. I applied it in natural lighting so you can see it literally blur my pores away. And I am somebody, because I have such dry skin, I hate powder. I never wear powder. I don't even know why I bought this, but I just was hoping that the claims were true and they absolutely are. So this is amazing for me and I feel like it is just so convenient. You just pop it open. It comes with a little sponge underneath and you just swirl it around and just, it gives great coverage. I don't even think it's supposed to be a foundation. It's not really marketed that way, but it covers everything that I want to cover. I'm wearing it actually today in the video, and I just, I love how easy it is to use. So I know I'm gonna be using this a ton going into the summertime. So, I mean, I think it's a great alternative if you want a foundation in a compact rather than a liquid to check this out. Another option that you could always try if you really like, again, having something in a compact that you could take with you if you're traveling or just that's super easy to use, that's quick. Um, on Amazon, they actually sell cushion compacts that are empty. So it comes with the empty sponge and what you do is you just take your favorite liquid foundation and pour it in, kind of stir it around with a Q-tip, put the sponge in and just soak it completely. And it comes with the little puff to apply it. They're actually really, really cool and a neat idea. So if you have a liquid foundation that works for you, but you just want that convenience of having it in a compact, I think that's kind of like a win-win. You already know you're gonna like the formula and it just makes it a little bit more travel friendly. So those are just some alternatives. I'm not even gonna call them dupes, but just alternatives to buying this foundation. If you've been kind of wondering about it or if you're on the fence or if you did buy it and you hated it like I do, then I think maybe one of those other options might work for you a little bit better. So anyway, that is everything that I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know you guys love dupes. I love finding dupes. It's like my favorite thing. So. If you are new to my channel and you haven't subscribed and you like dupe videos like this, definitely hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more. I do have a couple more coming up, one with makeup and one with skincare. I haven't done a skincare dupes video now in over a year, but I do have another one on my channel if you wanna check that out. Actually, I have a whole dupes playlist, so I will link that up above. And anyway, I appreciate you guys so much for taking time out of your day to spend it here with me. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe. Thanks guys, and I will see you in my next one. Take care, bye.